With more wreckage from the tragic wreck of the submersible Titan finally uncovered, we may be one step closer to truly understanding what happened during its fateful voyage into the deep. The Coast Guard says it has recovered the remaining wreckage from the Titan submersible disaster. The submersible went missing in June, triggering a multi-day international search and rescue operation. Despite some initial hope that the sub and its occupants could be saved, a debris field was eventually discovered. Sadly, authorities concluded that the sub had imploded during its descent and all five passengers on board were killed instantly. Stockton Rush, the CEO of OceanGate and the man who has shouldered much of the blame for the disaster, was on board at the time. Rush is on film bragging about the sub's experimental nature and dismissing various safety measures and regulations. Also on board were Shasada and Suleiman Dawood, Hamish Harding, and a leading authority on the Titanic wreck by the name of Paul-Henri Narjolet. While OceanGate still exists as a company, many of their operations, most notably their commercial dives, were suspended shortly after the loss of the Titan sub. As with the Coast Guard's earlier debris discovery, remains of human bodies were found in this latest batch of wreckage. Despite the recoveries, the Titan's story is far from over. An internal investigation into exactly what happened is still ongoing, and a public hearing will also be held at some point in the future. We still don't know many of the details surrounding the loss of the Titan submersible, and the recovery of further debris could assist in filling in the gaps. However, the prevailing theory is that the submersible's pressure vessel failed, leading to an almost immediate implosion. The cause of the failure was likely down to the pressure vessel's construction. For example, carbon fiber was used to make a large section of the vessel's hull, despite numerous experts warning against it. He definitely knew it was going to end like this. Typically, pressure vessels are usually made from steel or titanium. Carbon fiber is a fantastic material in many ways, but its main downside is how it fails. Metals will show clear signs of wear and stress before failure, whereas carbon fiber tends to fail quickly and catastrophically. The vessel's long cylindrical shape may have also posed problems. Pressure vessels rated for extreme depths tend to be spherical, as that shape is far more robust. Another potential problem could have been the combination of materials used. Since blending two different materials is difficult, it's believed that the end caps were allegedly glued to the carbon fiber hull. Finally, the porthole through which the vessel's inhabitants could gaze at the wreck was only rated to around half the depth to which the submarine intended to travel. Despite all of the red flags, the Titan still managed three trips down to Titanic, and OceanGate's fleet made more than 200 dives in total. The repeated trips could have also contributed to the disaster, as the pressure would put stress on the carbon fiber and cause hard-to-detect damage, which could have quickly led to catastrophic failure once the pressure built up again. The loss of the Titan and the difficulty of subsequent rescue and recovery efforts come down to one main factor, the harsh conditions of the deep ocean environment. There are numerous challenges vessels face beneath the waves, such as a lack of light and freezing cold temperatures, but the main threat that comes with diving is pressure-related. We experience pressure at sea level, with the entirety of Earth's atmosphere weighing down on us. However, the atmosphere is made of various, fairly lightweight gases amounting to a pressure of 14.7 pounds per square inch. Our bodies are adapted to this, and it isn't something we notice. Water is a lot denser, so you'll experience an additional 14.7 pounds of pressure every 33 feet you dive down. As things stand, no human being has managed to dive below 1,090 feet without the aid of a submarine or submersible, and even a submersible may not help much. Many military submarines have a depth rating of less than 1,000 feet, and the Titanic sits much deeper. The part of the seabed Titanic rests on is around 2.5 miles underwater. The pressure at this depth is around 6,000 pounds per square inch, so several tons will be pressing on every inch of whatever vessel makes it that far. Titan itself wasn't certified and was unlikely to receive any certification given its construction methods. In fact, very few subs are rated for that depth and none of them are made from carbon fiber.